And I know, I know this room is packed, but I'm going to ask you to please stand on your feet and welcome and thank for bringing us here tonight the astoundingly brilliant Dan Savage. So before I begin my story, just a funny aside, uh, 20 years ago, I was standing right over there where the coat check used to be, talking to Ginger Vitus, a drag queen who worked coat check, <laughs> and I kept saying, oh my god, that boy on the dance floor with the lips and the mouth and the long hair, he's so fucking pretty. And uh, then that boy on the dance floor came over to coat check to get his coat, because there was something in his pocket that he needed. And Ginger said, tell him, I'm sick, tell him. Sick of listening to you talk about him, tell him. So I looked at the beautiful boy with the amazing mouth and said, you have a pretty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> which is like the wrong thing to say, which is my fucking specialty in the romance department. And he looked at me and went, the better to eat you with. <laughs> And a half an hour later, we were in the bathroom over there making out. And uh, 20 years later, we're still together. So those one night stands. <laughs> I'm always telling the young gay kids, those, yeah, I, go, I go to colleges and I talk and invariably there's some young gay kid who only knows is I'm married and I have a kid and we have a dog. Uh, and he'll stand up and give a very beautiful speech about how he disapproves of hooking up doesn't use drugs or alcohol, hates the bar scene, and doesn't do one night stands, but wants what I have, family, and children, and dogs. <laughs> How do you get it, Dan? And I said, I was drunk in a gay bar, and I met this guy who was high, and we had a fucking one night stand. Pull the stick out of your ass and go get laid. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, bring, I only bring up Terry because uh, early in our relationship, when I, I was writing Savage Love when we met, and I used to write about my own sex life a lot in my column, and he said, uh, early in our relationship, you can write about your sex life or you can have sex with me, but you can't write about your sex life and have sex with me. So I stopped um, for Terry. Uh, so I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna tell a story tonight that's not about my sex life, although I'm involved. Um, because I have this crazy, stupid job, uh, and I've had it for a long time, um, I, I get paid a lot of money by colleges to come in and undo abstinence education in two hours. <laughs> Which is, it is my only superpower. I can get up on a stage at a big state college in front of a bunch of kids who've had shitty, shitty, terrible, bad sex ed, and two hours later they know what to do. <laughs> and how to do it, and what consent is, and how birth control works, and how to fuck if you're queer, uh, and how to negotiate, and all this stuff that they just don't get. The stuff they don't teach you in sex ed, which is how you talk people into fucking you. That's the hard part. <laughs> That's where people go wrong in sex. Reproductive biology, which is usually what sex ed is, that's easy. Any idiot can make a fucking baby. Bristol Palin made a fucking baby. <laughs> so anyway, I, I go to colleges and I talk and I take questions on cards so I get honest questions about people's sex lives so they don't have to stand up in front of their peers and ask. And I got this question at one of these uh, college events and it's somebody on the card it said, how do you tell someone you're dating about your secret shameful kink. How do you tell them without scaring them off? And I looked at the card and I looked up and said, well, it would help to know what the kink is. <laughs> because if it's something extreme, then the internet is your sorting hat. <laughs> you know, if you just can't get aroused without someone's shit in your mouth, the internet is where you go to find the other shit in the mouthers, and they're there. <laughs> and those of us who don't want shit in our mouths, we should be very grateful that the internet has skimmed those people off the top of the dating pool. <laughs> and I don't say that in a, like, a scat negative way, like it was better for them too. <laughs> so I said, if it's something extreme like the internet, but if it's something mild, like the way you present a kink is, you just, uh, you, you wanna present it like it's a perk. 
like it's a good thing, a fun thing about you, something you get to do. You present your kink like it's a present on Christmas morning. Like, you don't present your kink like it's fucking leukemia. Because then they're gonna react like it's fucking leukemia. But, but I, and I said at the end, like, I really can't help you not knowing what your kink is specifically, but here's the general advice. And then later after the talk, I hung out and I talked to some of the college kids and there are college kids around. And there was this one insanely hot guy, like on the periphery, who then disappeared, wasn't there anymore. And this was a college in the Midwest, uh, in the middle of nowhere, with a quad, and they would put the speakers up at this hotel, because the college, the university, had a, um, what are they called? A hospitality. No, a hospitality uh, degree. You could get a hotel degree. So they had a little hotel on campus. I was staying at this hotel <laughs> that's like steps away from where I was speaking. And when I walked into the lobby, there was the insanely hot guy standing in the lobby waiting for me. And he walked up to me and said, uh, I'm the one with the kink question. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. What is it? <laughs> and he's like, oh, it's just, I, I really don't want to tell you, but, and I was like, <sighs> Piss, bondage, in a really loud voice, like, it's piss, it's bondage, it's feet, it's shoes, it's smoking, it's bubbles. It, I think I also said it's clowns. <laughs> like, I just started rattling off the craziest fucking ickiest fetishes. Like, I don't like clowns either. <laughs> that would be a dead person the minute the blindfold came up. Now it's snuff clown porn that we're making. And... He finally said that he would tell me if I promised not to make fun of him, and I said, I can't make that promise. <laughs> but I will only make fun of you in a good-natured way. And he said that his fetish was having birthday cake smashed in his face. And I was like, okay, you know, like pie fetishes and people wanting pies smashed in their face, that's a real thing. Goop fetish, being all covered and like wet and messy, that's a real thing. This is a real thing. Like, I don't doubt you. I th that's, that's a fetish. That's a kink. Um, to me, that's sort of in between extreme and mild because it's not extreme. It's not like shit cake in the face. It's <laughs> birthday cake, and that's really rare, but it's mild. Like, anybody should be willing to do that to you. And... <laughs> He looked really sad, and I was just like, you know, this is how you would talk about it with a partner. And he said it, you know, we got to the end of the conversation, and I'm trying to like, I gotta go to bed. I have like a 5 a.m. flight to get out of this hellhole in the Midwest. <laughs> and he's, you know, gonna go, and he said, and I said, uh, have you ever told anyone that you were dating? And he said, yeah, I told my girlfriend, uh, my first girlfriend, my only girlfriend, and she broke up with me immediately. And I looked at him, and he's like row team hot, like shoulders and tall and chiseled and just like classic. And I looked at him and went, oh my God, if you were my boyfriend, I would smash cakes in your face. <laughs> All the time. Like, if that was the price of admission, I would just be like, one more and then we're gonna turn you around and bend you over and and so, I, I wasn't offering. <laughs> I'm not really that into straight guys. I'm not one of those gay guys who's into straight guys. I'm, I'm a gay guy who's into gay guys. <laughs> like, the International Space Station goes over my house, and if Terry's outside, they go, look at that fag. <laughs> like, I like guys who are obviously gay. I like swishy guys. I like effeminate guys. I like guys with gay voice. That thing that some gay men said, like he opened his mouth and the purse fell out. I'm like, awesome. Now there's more room for my dick in his mouth. So anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't offering, I wasn't angling, I wasn't hitting on him. I was just telling him the truth. Like, oh my God, if you were my gay boyfriend, I would smash a cake in your face. And he went, would you? I, I mean, would you? Are you making fun of me? And I was like, no, 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 I would totally... I would totally do that. <laughs> and he said, I mean, really, would you? Could we, tonight? Would you do that for me? No, and I was like, has anyone ever, ever? Have you ever had somebody? And he said, no, no, no. I've done it to myself. No one's ever done it to me. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, what would you do? <laughs> yeah. 
what would Jesus do? And so I said to him, like, you know, this is all well and good, but like, we don't have a birthday cake. Uh, I don't have a birthday cake in my pocket. I'm sure room service doesn't have a birthday cake. And he said, I will go get one. And he left the hotel and got on his bike and rode to a Safeway or something and came back with two birthday cakes, like with the, the balloons on the top that looked like turds, the, the frosting balloons that just looked like orange turds. He came back with two birthday cakes on his bicycle and, he, and I just like was in the lobby still like, I can't believe this is happening. And I took him up to my room and I was like, are you really sure you wanna waste your first cake in face? partnered cake and face moment on a dude, on a gay dude, on an old gay dude that you're not into and you're never ever gonna see again and you're not gonna write about this or talk about this. <laughs> because I'm now kind of relying on this income from college speaking gigs and if they hear that I'm going around, I won't get booked at Liberty University, right? And he's like, no, no, I'll never tell anyone, but I really want this, and yes, please do it to me. And I was like, okay, let's go up to the room. <laughs> and you know, everyone working, there's like two people behind the counter who are students who work there who've been watching all this, who then like, watch us go to the elevator, and then they look at each other. Like this me and this gorgeous guy who's a classmate of theirs for all I know, like talking, and then he disappears, and he comes back with cake, and then we're going upstairs. <laughs> I wanted to go up to them and say, it's okay, we're bulimic. <laughs> It'll be right back up and he'll be right back down. Don't you worry. <laughs> Sorry. Boo. <laughs> Can't have a sense of humor about anything, everything. Um, so we go up to the room and we go into the bathroom and he, I'm like, all right, how do you want to play this? And he gets completely undressed and he is amazing, he is gorgeous, he is classical everything, um, like Zac Efron abs, and he's just beautiful. And I like had the cake, and I was like, oh, like it's a layer cake, and he said, yeah, it takes your face longer to go through it. <laughs> like, you, you've thought of this thing through. <laughs> I'm like, so what do you want me to do? And he's like, just like push it into my face slowly, but really hard. I was like, okay, you close your eyes and, this is how long ago it was, close your eyes and pretend I'm Hillary Swank. <laughs> and so uh, he did, he closed his eyes and he's jacking himself and that was impressive too, the whole package. <laughs> and he's jacking, and I smashed the cake into his face and then he's rubbing the cake frosting all over himself and he's jacking himself with the frosting and I, and then Hillary Swank goes and gets the other cake <laughs> and comes back and I'm, being perfectly silent so I can be Hillary Swank in his imagination. I smash the cake and he's jacking himself furiously. And then he comes and comes. Like, I hadn't seen someone shoot that far since the Challenger exploded. <laughs> oh, fuck you, too soon? I've been waiting since the Reagan administration to make that joke. You can't tell me it's too soon. <laughs> and then I'm polite, you know? He's done and he has that post-orgasm, like the last drip leaves his dick and you can just see him collapsing inside himself like, oh my God, I've so revealed myself, right? Now my dick is getting soft and my brain is getting coming back. <laughs> And I was just like, you know what? Here, wipe off of this towel. There's cake everywhere <laughs> in this bathroom because when you furiously jack off with cake all over you and your hands, it just goes places. <laughs> and I was like, and he's like, do you want me to help clean? And I was like, no, you, you just get dressed and you know, email me tomorrow and we can just chat and uh, you know, this isn't a problem. And when you have your next girlfriend, I will call her. I will tell her. And I will tell her that if she won't push cakes into your faces, you're gonna spend your whole life in hotel rooms with gay men doing it for you. <laughs> and she doesn't want that. And I also told him, like, you have to be like, you have to be like, this is the price of admission, you have to pay for this, right? Just like, look at you, just go, be confident, like this. 
you can have this for pushing a cake in my face and letting me jack it every once in a while. Um, and so he leaves, and I'm too polite. Like, we have dinner parties. Nobody gets to, nobody's allowed to clean up or move a dish. I will do it all. And that was my impulse, and it took me till like 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, there's cake frosting in the grout, on the tile. Like, oh my God, it's on the ceiling. And I don't have it in me to stick that to the maid. Like, I'll leave an extra five bucks under the pillow. You clean that shit up, lady. So I scrubbed the whole bathroom and put it all away. And he, he in my mind, is the guy I always think about when I write Savage Love, when I write my column. Because when I first started writing my column, I hated straight people. Sorry. Um, that's why I tried to mainstream breeder, which is our hate term for you. Um, although it's not really a hate term, and it's it, it is an acknowledgement of your utility, right? <laughs> we reproduce ourselves out of your bodies, <laughs> like alien or cocoons, you know? And it, it didn't take long for me to start getting these letters that softened my heart, that made me like straight, straight guys particularly more. Because I felt so terrible for them, because they were all struggling, so many straight people, particularly 23 years ago when I started writing Savage Love, before the whole sex positive revolution of which there are so many people in this room who have played such significant roles in it. <laughs> these people who are just paralyzed with shame by their non-normative desires, which were almost all straight people. And it took me a while to realize what their problem was. And the problem was, you know, <laughs> you're gay, I'm gay, right? If you're gay and you're coming out and you're 16 years old, like I was, you had to go and look your Catholic mother in the face and say, I put dicks in my mouth. <laughs> Other men's dicks. <laughs> Not a gymnast, mom. Not, on the, not a download gymnast that you didn't know about. Like other, I suck cocks, right? You tell your mom you're gay and that's all she sees. Like dicks flying into your mouth. Once you've told your Catholic mom that you're a cocksucker, telling your first gay boyfriend you want to be spanked or you want to be peed on, or you want to be tied up, or you want a cake smashed in your face, or you have a clown fetish, or a balloon fetish, or a smoke fetish, or a boot fetish, or anything else, is small fucking potatoes. <laughs> it's microscopic fucking potatoes compared to going to mom and saying, <laughs> and your mother going, no, it can't be true, I never knew. And you go, Mom, I asked you for tickets to a chorus line for my 13th birthday. <laughs> but Mom, you know, I'm so old that my mom was of the generation that thinking people, thinking someone was gay was literally the worst thing you could think of them. So you didn't think that, because that meant you were a terrible person. My mother thought Liberace was straight, because you didn't <laughs> think that. My, mother, the, my mother's type doesn't exist anymore except for Michelle Bachman who looks at Marcus and sees a straight guy. <laughs> so the problem for straight people is that the kinks and the fetishes so often loom so, they're the mountains. For us, for queers, they're the fucking molehills. Coming out to mom hard, saying to your boyfriend, you know, I'd really like to pee in your mouth. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> and in my experience, like 35% of the time, successful. I have never peed in Terry's mouth. This is not... <laughs> this is a little truism about the column, actually, is that whenever I say something about what I'm interested in or what I do, it's always a lie. Um, I was never that into Ashton Kutcher or Tidy Whities, for instance. And so it's my mission, really, and has been my mission since I started Savage Love, to hold straight people's hands and tell them that it's okay to like what you like and to ask for it. And if somebody rejects you and runs away, like that girl who dumped the guy who liked cakes in his face, that wasn't the right person for you. That your interests, your fetishes, your kinks, they are not just a Christmas morning gift, they are a superpower where you can quickly dispose of people who aren't right for you, who don't, who either, who either don't share your kink or aren't open-minded enough to indulge you in yours so long as it isn't something that traumatizes them. And so you should run towards rejection. You should lay it on the table and see how they react. And that's really been the, 
thing that I've done in Savage Love for so long. And it's such an honor when I get letters from, how many straight people are here tonight? When I get letters from straight people who are like, you gave me the words that allowed me to come out about X to my partner and it's awesome. And I lost my husband when I came out or I lost my wife, but now I'm with someone who gets me. And now I am getting all the cake in my face that a boy can stand. And that's it. Thank you all very much. Thank you to Dixie.